I was testing some loads in this H&K MR762 and I jammed it up something fierce. Stick around to find out what went wrong and how I fixed the problem. Reloading for a 308 rifle is different uh, when we load for a bolt action compared to a semi-auto like that HK MR762. Now I've been hand loading for this Ruger Precision Rifle for quite a number of years. And in fact, if some of you have been following our Extreme Reloading series, uh, you heard me talk and we did a lot of work over the years on special reloads for this particular rifle in 308 Winchester. And the case prep process that I use is pretty intense. What I'm doing is I'm using this Redding Competition Series die, full length resizing every one of those cases. And I really like this die because it has a titanium uh, neck outside diameter bushing in it that I can change out at will. Well, what I found out is that there's a certain size that that uh, Ruger Precision Rifle really likes and that's what's seated in here or set in here right now. This is an excellent die. I'm bumping back the shoulder only about a thousandth of an inch and with this entire loading process including annealing I get some pretty darn good case life out of this process. Now one of the measurements that I make as part of my case preparation is I measure the case head expansion. And what I've noticed over the years, and I always keep record of, of all of my reloads. In fact, day one, when I first started reloading in the 1980s, I still have those records and I can look back at those things if I want to. Now, for this particular rifle, I started loading a couple of years ago, a number of years ago, I have noticed that um, the case head expansion um, and using these type of dies uh, is, is kind of large. It's right there at SAMI spec, 0 0.470 inch, and that is maximum for SAMI spec. And again, if you've been watching our Extreme Reloading uh, series, you've probably heard me say more than once that this particular Ruger Precision Rifle, probably all Ruger Precision Rifles, and maybe lots of uh, factory rifles in general, they have a pretty generous chamber, pretty generous chamber. And so those cases with a case head expansion of 0 0.470 cycle beautifully in that rifle. Now I've shot quite a few reloads in this HK rifle. None of them caused any problem until that kind of a bad jam happened and that was not a good situation. What happened was that that case obviously was slightly oversized, slightly oversized. Those cases would have shot fine in that Ruger Precision Rifle. Didn't do well here. They were full length size just like I talked about. But what happened was the great majority of that round loaded into the chamber but right there at that case head it was a little bit too large stuck in the chamber. Uh, the lugs on this rifle actually started to close and uh, I had a devilish time. We had a devilish time getting this thing um, unjammed. Well we did unjam it, got it all fixed and then I started making tremendous amounts of measurements to find out what in the world went wrong. And um, what I have learned is it was simply a slightly large, probably 0 0.470, that's the largest that I allow my cases to, uh, to be as I'm going through that, that process, didn't work in this rifle. And what did I do to completely eliminate this in the future? First of all, it should go without saying that whenever we're reloading for semi-automatic rifles, we cannot neck size. You can't do that. You got a full length size. But I was doing that, and that still uh, caused a rather large problem out at the range. So what I did, did a little bit of research, uh, and I purchased a new set of dies, RCBS Black Box. This is the RCBS AR series dies for the 308 Winchester, 
And this is what they call a small base. Uh, that's the SB. And then there's a uh, seating die, which is a taper crimp uh, seating die. But just like any of the other dies, um, I went through the normal cleaning process on this. Really got it nice and clean before I first used it. Uh, set up my reloading press so I got a nice little bit of little bit of cam over, and then I started preparing cases. Oh, and by the way, the lock ring, the die lock ring, this one right here, this is not one that comes with the RCBS die itself. I don't like the ones that RCBS provides. Um, so I, I always change them out. So this is a, a separate die. This is a, a die by Forster. Kind of like this die. I also really like the Hornady die lock rings as well. So let me take a couple cases. I'm going to do a demonstration for you. I'm going to case prep one using my Redding competition seating uh, sizing die. And then I'll do another one with this die. And we're going to make some measurements before we even start. I'm going to measure that case head uh, diameter before and after, and I'm also going to look at the uh, shoulder and the shoulder setback before, actually before and after sizing. We have a couple of cases here. This is twice fired brass. It was fired once from factory and then one reload. Let's go ahead and take a look at the case head expansion on these. 0.471, that is out of SAMI spec. Very similar thing, 0.471. Both of these were fired in that Ruger Precision Rifle. I have already mounted the Redding competition sizing die right here. We'll start off with this one on one of these cases. The other thing I want to do before I even uh, do the sizing is uh, I'm going to also measure the shoulder. For this I'm going to use the Hornady Lock and Load Headspace Comparator Kit. For me I like to use this when I'm first setting up my dies to uh, determine how much am I really setting back the shoulder. So I've already got the, um, the 30 cal set up here and zeroed out. We're going to go ahead and take a measurement of this case. Get it just right. 1.662. Hopefully this one's about the same. Make for a good comparison. Pretty much, yeah exactly the same. Okay. Now, of course, we have to lube these cases. First one in is with this Redding die. Okay, I'm using the Hornady one-shot. I really like this case lube quite a bit. Let's go ahead. I'll take this one right here. Run it through. Let's make that measurement. Wipe that off a little bit. Let's look at the shoulder setback. Okay, we came back, in this case, a couple thousands. Now I'm going to pull this die and change it out for the RCBS AR series small base. There we go. Try this one. Now I'll tell you, there is a lot more elbow grease necessary with this one. Let's take a look at it. Pretty much set the shoulder back the same. That's cool. That's very good. Now let's take a look at the case head expansion. RCBS, Redding. 
Okay, let's start with the Redding die. Redding competition sizing die. Measure that. There we go. I brought it back into spec 0 0.469. And that one really dropped, 0 0.466. I would not expect this one, this one won't have a problem whatsoever in that H&K rifle. That H&K rifle's got a tight chamber. And it's possible that this one, even though it's within Sammy spec, might still have a problem in that rifle. That one won't. I prepared 100 cases using this exact same method that I just used with the AR small base die and every one of those cases came in with a case head expansion outside diameter less than or equal to 0 0.468 of an inch. In fact, only one of those 100 cases had 468. Every one of those was less. Just like we just saw 0 0.467, 0 0.466. So those cases are really brought down and I feel extremely confident that they're going to cycle just beautifully in that HK MR762 rifle. Now you might be wondering, might be asking, well why not just use the AR small base uh, dies, RCBS dies, for all my 308. It, it'll work just fine in the Ruger precision rifle as well. Yes it will, it absolutely will. But here's one of the considerations and that has to do with brass life. As I was actually sizing that, I purposely mentioned, and I could feel it, that there is an awful lot more elbow grease, elbow grease necessary to actually run that ram through its full stroke. And I know that that brass is being worked a whole lot more with that small base die compared to the Redding die. The Redding die is set up for my Ruger precision rifle. It's setting that shoulder back just like I like it and more or less minimally sizing or full length sizing that uh, each of those cases. As a result those cases are going to have a prolonged life. Yes recall I'm also annealing and I'm still annealing all of these cases uh, it doesn't matter if I'm loading it for the AR uh, or for my bolt rifles. But the case life is almost certainly going to be reduced when I'm using the AR small base dies. Now I'm not really too concerned about that though because if we're putting um, these these rounds through a semi-auto and if you've done that you know that they get dinged up. They get dinged up far faster than they do when you're shooting um, and using those loads through a bolt action rifle. Uh, you're going to get some dings happening on the the shoulder probably, maybe some on the neck, but what's also going to happen I noticed is under those forceful extractions, even on factory ammo, sometimes those rims are going to get bent uh, and, uh, and I noticed that actually as I was loading these 100 or I should say as I was preparing the 100 cases I just mentioned, I actually had to discard about four uh, because the rims had been bent. Now it's possible that they were bent from the factory, they weren't perfect from the, fa uh, from the factory, but uh, I kind of doubt that. Uh, I don't want to have another jam happen or an extraction failure because of a bent rim. So those get chucked and I think that's what's going to happen. Before we see an end of life because of stress and wear on the brass itself, we're going to end up chucking them because of all the other dings and damage that they get in just that normal cycle of use. And so I think it's a good idea to look at those rims um, when you are preparing cases. You can simply look at them, but the way I detected almost every one of those was um, as I'm putting them into the shell holder. They got sticky, they didn't want to rotate inside the shell holder, pull them out, inspect it, yeah, that's got a bad rim, and so I chucked it. So I'm going to continue loading um, with the AR small base for any of those cases that are going to be used in the MR762. I've actually reserved certain head stamps for that rifle and it's going to be very easy for me to keep that straight. I'm also going to continue using 
that Redding die for my bolt action rifle. So, good stuff to know if you're loading for a semi auto 308 rifle. These RCBS AR series uh, small base dies really work. Good stuff. Thanks a bunch for watching.